Jessica Mackin and I'm Melanie Fitzgerald and we're here at the Hampton Days Magazine Art Show at Ashwa Holland Springs. We're going to take you around and show you a whole bunch of fantastic artwork. We also have some fun things. We have interactive art. A lot of kids back here are uh, taking part in it right now and uh, we're just going to have a lot of fun. Right, so join us and we'll show you around. Victor Giannini, he's one of the artists showcased here tonight, and he has a comic called Day to Day. And Victor, what is the story behind this comic, this piece? Well, this is a comic that I started when I was in college, and it's about a guy waking up from a dream sequence into reality, living with his roommates, and all of the dialogue is set in symbols instead of words. And as he goes about his daily life, the plan was that he was going to lose his passion, which was skateboarding. He forgets his skateboard, gets stopped by the police, and blah, blah, blah. There's this whole big plan, but what ended up happening was my actual day-to-day -day life that this was based on got in the way of making this comic about my day-to-day -day life. <laughs> and uh, this last panel I drew, which was about seven years ago, and I regret it, and nothing can stop me from returning to it except new projects, which I've embarked on. So someday maybe I'll finish it. And it says at the end, it says, and then dot, dot, dot. So are you hoping that whoever eventually buys this piece kind of creates their own ending to the story? I would like that. I would like, A, for someone to buy the piece, and B, for them to finish it. That would actually be quite interesting. Uh, if they don't, I'm up to it. I just don't know when. Okay, well, thank you. I mean, I'm sure somebody is definitely going to buy it. It's amazing. If not tonight, another night. And um, you can ch uh, check Victor out uh, here. He's o he always has stuff here at uh, Ashwa Hall. beauty editor at Hampton Days Magazine and she just joined us at our art show at Ashwa Hall. Um, Laura also works for Gurney's and donated a few of the uh, raffle prizes which is great. Yeah. So nice. how are you enjoying yourself today? Very good. It, it was actually I'm I'm very um, well I'm not surprised if I'm at one of your um, events but it's it's um, very avant-garde and I didn't expect that. So, um, and, and I love anything that's really over the top and out there. I haven't even finished exploring, but there's people with, you know, paint on their face and, you know, artwork, sculptures and all kinds of things. Not, it's not just paintings, you know, not something that I expected. So it's very unique, very different, and I'm excited to, to see the rest of of all of this. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. <laughs> Why don't um, tell us about the uh, some of the raffle prizes you oh, donated. Okay, so we had given away um, a bunch of samples. There's always samples available in my world. Um, but uh, we had given away um, some products from our new 
um, pedicure line that we're using, manicure pedicure line. Um, it's like an ice cream bath ball um, with some manicure pedicure supplies and polishes and things like that, um, along with our newsletter explaining some of the um, promotions going on at the salon at Gurney's this month. And then we also have, uh, what else did I give? Oh my God, there was another gift bag that had some, was it hair products? Oh, oh, I see it. Some some of our exfoliators, <laughs> yes, that we're that we're um, using as well in um, our luxury manicures and and pedicures as well. So it's all about pedicures and um, me time at the Ocean View Salon. Yeah, definitely go visit Laura Gurney. Yeah, the green tea ice cream pedicure is, is uh, the pedicure of the month uh, for this March, and all of the services in. Uh, the salon and spa are 25% off during the month of March, um, Sunday through Thursday. So take advantage of it because we have some really incredible people. Well, thanks, Laura. I'll You're let welcome. you go explore a little more. I'm here with Robert Nasatka, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his piece. Um, obviously, this is Hannibal Lecter. Are you a big fan of uh, the movie, or tell me a little bit of something about the piece? Well, uh, I was looking for a pop image that was kind of relevant and kind of, you know, street, audacious. Um, I wanted to make it a little bit out there, so I was looking through, you know, celebrities and stuff I thought of, and I saw a picture of Hannibal Lecter, and I thought it would be funny. and. I wanted to contrast it uh, against the pink to kind of have the shock value but not have it be too shocking. And uh, I don't know, I just I thought it was a cool thing to do, so I just went with it. I like it a lot. It's really clever because you think Hannibal Lecter, you think dark, you know, dreary, black, and here it is in bright pink and purple. So I like it a lot. It's very, very interesting. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I like the psychological aspect of the image, uh, but I also wanted to to make it more palatable and more uh, hip, kind of, you know, like a lighthearted approach. Um, so that's what I'm working on now is uh, kind of the tongue-in-cheek sort of pop thing, and uh, but also having um, some more sophistication to it. So that's what I'm looking for. Thank you very much, and I see you have some uh, face paint. We have uh, face painters here today. Did you do it, or did you have the face painters? Uh, my friend uh, Kat did it, and it basically was like an anime thing, kind of anime theme. Yeah. So my friend Moses and his girlfriend came up with the idea and then we did it on the way. So, and it kind of goes along with the face painting theme. Yeah. Did, so, you, did you know that there was going to be face painting here tonight? Uh, yeah, earlier we were told, so it kind of, it fit in. So, well, you completely it. fit in now, right? Yeah, I feel good. <laughs> Having fun. The show because um, we kind of, we could do what we wanted to, so. There was really, there were no rules, which I think is, it's really, it's a, it's yeah. a nice way to have the venue go. And yeah. that's, yeah, that's what Hampton Days likes to do is we just try and, um, we just try and, <laughs> um, you know, um, just get local artists and musicians names known and out there and I think it's good when you don't really have some sort of concrete theme that you can just, you know, do whatever you want, like you said. I was happy to be and, invited and a lot of my well, friends are in the show. And um, it's really, fre it's like there's fresh ideas and, um, you know, just it doesn't have to be in New York City. There's a lot of people uh, doing things here that are like kind of revolutionary. Right. And we're joining together to kind of to do it together, have fun. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing. We're happy. You know, in a place like this, East Hampton, it's beautiful in the winter. There's not much to do. And, you know, people can explore their creativity and, and show it off in the winter, and that's something to do out here, you know, to break, break up the, the dreary, dreary months, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, it keeps us out of trouble. Yeah. And, you know, we're getting older now, so yeah. uh, we got to watch it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a good way to stay occupied, and it's exciting because then you have the summer to really um, shine. Uh, right. you, there's a lot of chances to shine and get involved, and then you have the work ready for that. Exactly. And you'll be ready. Yep, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm 
here with Sheila from Insatiable Eats, who is catering the event. How are you doing tonight, Sheila? Wonderful. I love this party. You did a great job. The art's fantastic. Hey, thank you so much. Why don't you tell us a little bit, bit, a little bit about the food you prepared tonight? Well, our chef, Marco Barilla, prepared um, a selection of tapas. He's the new executive chef at Copa Restaurant in Bridgehampton, and all of our catering comes out of that kitchen. So, um, so he prepared this uh, food, and we've been um, out on the East End for five years now doing parties and events of all sizes. Great, thanks. The food's delicious. What do we have on the table? Um, we just have a selection of uh, chicken satays with a peanut sauce, um, beef uh, brochettes with a red wine marmalade reduction, um, and uh, everything is made by hand. We have ham croquettes, we have some little um, spanakopitas, just tapa style everything. Well, it sounds delicious. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take your own photo booth. And this is pretty great because we can wear masks and hats and boas, and this is so much fun. <laughs> I'm sort of like a bunny spider. I'm not sure what I'm Yeah, I don't know what you are. You're really scared of spiders, too, which is funny. <laughs> I hate spiders. <laughs> All right, let's take a picture. Cheese, cheese. Look. This is what Hampton Days is all about right here. <laughs> We're about having fun and not care. Visit us on HamptonDays.com. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook. <laughs>Scott Givens, who's also part of our art show tonight. Uh, why don't you tell us a little about your work, Scott? Okay, well, I make soft sculptures, so that's meaning I make sculptures out of textiles, fabrics, felt, buttons, and the such. Um, anywhere from small little monster, merch monsters, to shadow boxes, and I also make really big out-of-the-frame pieces. Uh, once I made a 14-foot jellyfish that we hung from a gallery ceiling. So it kind of runs the gamut um, from small to large, framed in 3D pieces. Oh, that's great. Why don't you tell us a little about the uh, pieces you have tonight? Well, these pieces, I made little scenes, um, and they, I was an astronomy major in college, so I've always had a thing for space and astronomy and whatnot, and I always go out stargazing with friends, and these are kind of like portraits of me and my friends out looking at stars. There's one behind you, actually, that leads into more with that, and, you know... I like to make artwork that's fun, that's colorful, that everyone can enjoy, that doesn't take it, itself too seriously. So I think these, these fit into that pretty well. It's definitely fun and it definitely uh, adds a lot to our show tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Dana Walker, who curated this entire show, um, tell me a little bit about the process we went through to put this together. Actually, it wasn't that difficult in the start because we knew a lot of the local artists. Um, everyone here is under the age of 35. Um, it's kind of a tight-knit community, so it was easy to get people to agree to post their stuff on the walls. However, you know, actually making it happen and having it come to fruition is, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a daunting task, but it was definitely worth it. Yeah, we had a great time doing it together. It was <laughs> a lot of fun. I'm really glad everything worked out great. <laughs> um, you have artwork up all around here, and um, why don't you tell me a little bit about it? Um, well, uh, it is photography. Um, most of the work that is up right now is uh, photographed in Washington Square Park. Um, I like to document the artists, um, the musicians, basically anyone who's working in Washington Square Park with a little cup trying to get some money. Um, I think that's just very interesting, very impromptu. I really like just the candidness of photographing the people. Um, 
who are trying to earn a living, the young people. Um, other than that, the one um, piece here called The Eye, that was taken at our recent trip to Europe that was at the actual London Eye. It's a double exposure, so it's a little abstract. So although it's taken with digital, it's developed like regular film is. Weiss, another featured artist at the Hampton Days Magazine Art Show at Asheville Hall. Um, hi Molly. Hi. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little about your work? Well, I do the best I can. Um, this body of work, this piece, uh, it was a project I did this summer featuring seven different dancers combined with seven different music musicians and it went over a time span of a week. So each day there was a different performer and a different type of music. And so I guess all in all, I was generating a platform for people to just come together. Or that's what I was hoping for. And so tonight I have the hip hop night, the ballerina night, and the Irish step dancing night. The video over here, um, and that's this body of work so far. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work. I would do, you know, but it was a lot of fun. It was midsummer, which was insane, out in the Hamptons. It was in Amagansett at my dear friend Jesse Elliott's gallery called Whitewash Studio. And it was outside, so it was completely public. It was free, and uh, it was just an overall really fun experience. I took video of each of the nights. This is the one left going on, and it's the hip hop night which uh, cap captures this painting right behind us. Um, as you can see, I set up six different colors for all the different people kind of involved. I worked with Akeem uh, in the city. We're teachers together. He teaches hip hop, I teach art. And I have invited him out here. And this was the event that went on that evening. And I just filmed it just straight footage. I didn't, I haven't edited it yet. I don't really know where it's going quite yet. It is just a thought, but it's, I'm interested in layers of people and layers of color and depicting color like people. I'm here with Grant Hafner, who is also a featured artist at our art show tonight. Um, you have two paintings up now. It was three, but you sold one, so yeah, 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 <laughs> which yeah, is yeah. great. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your pieces? Uh, well, these are actually ceramic tiles. Um, I, I'm trying to do a, a different thing that's a little more affordable, so I tried to kind of mask something out. These are one of two, uh, so I'm going to have two uh, versions of each tile made, and I sold one, which is awesome. Yeah. So they're just like, it's an affordable version of a painting that I made like last year. Oh, that's great. Why don't you tell us about your paintings last year? Well, I, I, what I like to do is I, like, I enjoy the landscape. I try to go out there and um, get pictures and, uh, that I enjoy, mainly road scenes. I have a fondness of like driving down the road. Uh, so I'll go out, get a picture, take it home, recreate it the best I can. Uh, in my style, I, I, I like to use lines, a lot of linear stripes. I love stripes. Um, I love graffiti. Originally I just liked graffiti and so I was trying to do something fast and that's where the lines kind of stripes and lines came. And, and do you uh, yeah. yeah do you go out looking for the lines or do you just I kind do. of yeah, yeah no, I have you to stop hunt it out. and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> when drive you see around them, and like when you see something you get that wow moment where yeah. you're like and then you pull over and, and you yeah. try to capture it but generally you're higher up in your car or I have a truck so then you have to get on the back of your truck because you got to get it the right level. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you have to find them. You do. I hunt them. I hunt them down. But you show a lot out on the East End. Do you have any upcoming shows? We do. In July, we're going to be back here at Ashwalk Hall. July 
the last weekend in July. I should know that date. Maybe the 29th. I don't know. Yeah, last somewhere around July. there. <laughs> Asheville Hall. Be at Asheville Hall the last weekend in July. <laughs> Come back. Um, and then, uh, you know, there, there's always stuff happening very quickly and frequently, and so it's kind of hard. I don't have anything planned. I'm here with Moses Burden, and we're next to a few pieces of his, one of which is called Haze. And um, can you tell me a little bit, Moses? See, it's, he's throwing me off because he has his eyes closed with the face paint, so um, I'm going to try to try to have a conversation with you at the same time. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, Haze? Uh, I love Jimi Hendrix, and I've been getting into the, uh, the street art stencil work idea. Um, it's a very organic, very quick process. Cut the stencil out by hand, apply it, uh, modify it, do it as quickly as possible and walk away because in real life when you're doing stencil work like this, it is a crime. So uh, there's something kind of racy about doing it that I like a lot. And uh, you know, you do other pieces too. You do things um uh, on mirror, what, what texture do you do on mirror? Uh, I do a lot of work in cut vinyl. Um, I really enjoy the, uh, the, the fine nature of it. Uh, you can get a lot of fine detail out of vinyl. Uh, it led me into the stencil work. Um, you know, uh, Mind Lube is a four color vinyl application. It's the same technique that's used in sign making and uh, auto lettering, but I've taken it to what I'm hoping is another level. I think it's so it's so interesting, especially there's a piece over in the corner. Uh, I don't know if you can take a look over there. It's called Scream. Uh, how many hours did you say it took you to do this? Uh, that was about a 16-hour project in total between cutting all the layers of the vinyl. Uh, assembling the different layers, putting them on the substrate. The whole thing is actually a sticker and could be peeled off and applied to anything that you want. Uh, your car, your wall, a, a, a bathroom mirror, anything along those lines. Uh, most of the work that I do, if it's done in vinyl, can be applied to anything that you want. It's a sticker. And that's so amazing. Stickers are so fun. And you were telling me before about your sticker obsession. And, and when you were a little kid, you uh, got into stickers. Uh, is that correct? I've had a sticker habit since I was very, very young. And luckily, in my adulthood, I've been able to realize the final level of a sticker obsession. And I think you have. And, and now other people can enjoy it. And if they, you know, if they buy their, your pieces, they can stick it wherever they want. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's great to have this venue here. Thanks to Ashwag Hall for putting on these shows and inviting the local artists. There's a great young art community that's going on out here. And a lot of it is centered around this building here in particular. Uh, I've seen a lot of great art happen here, even just in the past couple of months. It's been wonderful to be involved in. It has been, and Hampton Days also wants to thank Ashwa Hall as well. It is our first annual art show, and we hope to have many uh, as uh, the years continue. Here with Reverend Justin Smith. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? Doing quite nicely, Jess. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about your artwork you have in the show? All right, well, as you can see, they're... Uh Ugly creatures, mutants, if you will. Um, this one, yeah, is part mutant, part robot. Uh, basically, my whole uh, philosophy of art is just uh, combine different parts of animals, machines, humans, and uh, just arrange it in a way that I think is entertaining or humorous or sometimes scary. How long does it take you to do a piece? Let's see. Uh, I think. I did all three of these uh, in, at the same time. Uh, I think I did the pencil drawings for like five of them in one night, did the painting work the next night over the course of a few hours, and then the following night I did uh, whatever with a layer of colored pencil. What's the medium of your work? Uh, well, these uh, were a series I did using gouache and a little bit of colored pencil to kind of finish them off and add some extra detail and shading. but. Um, yeah, it was just uh, one phase I went through. I've been experimenting with different mediums over the years. Now, most of what I do is digital and uh, working on a comic book called Spiungo, featuring um, 
can't see him from here, but a uh, little yellow guy in that painting at the end. His name is Spiungo. He is uh, going to be the star of his own comic book, which I'm going to start printing this year. It's uh, set in my hometown, Bayonne, New Jersey, the most polluted place in the world. And uh, that's probably why I'm obsessed with mutant creatures, because I grew up with them. I love the, uh, the framing. It really brings out the paintings. And um, did you do those yourself? Or did you oh, yeah. I just uh, <laughs> I work at uh, Reed's Photo here in East Hampton. So I have access to frames. And uh, rather than just put them in a standard frame, which would look kind of boring, I decided to uh, you know, jazz them up a bit by squirting them with acrylic paint, which uh, complements the image well. And then put the black mat there. It just really makes everything jump out. Great. started as a newspaper column in The Independent, like five years ago, I think. <laughs> yeah, it was when we were living in Hampton Bays, and we saw a whole bunch of magazines out, um, Hampton's Magazine and things of that nature, and you know, other, uh, and people were doing newspaper articles, and we said, why don't we do something like that? Yeah, we figured it would just be fun. We could, you know, write about the stuff that we love, and I think that's what we've done. We just write about everything that we enjoy, and we just have fun with it. And I think it's evolved over time. Uh, you know, we used to write about our experiences growing up when we first started about five years ago. And then we've incorporated now over the years, um, you know, trying to get uh, local artists and musicians and fashion designers uh, names out there because there's so many talented people on the East End. It's, it's unbelievable. And every year, you know, you think you're going to run out of people or things to talk about, but you really don't. There's always something new, uh, new people coming out every summer. So, I mean, it's really been a blessing for us. Yeah, it's so nice to be able to write about what you want to read about, basically. And I think uh, we try to do that. And I hope um, people around town enjoy it. And uh, it comes out in three times in the summer, and we do smaller issues during the winter. And uh, we have the column in the Independent still which is great because we can have a, you know, show that to, you know, tons of people all over the East End. So we really enjoy it. And we love throwing parties like this. It's art shows and different sorts of events. And there's always something going on with us. We always have something. <laughs> And, you, and like I said earlier, thank you so much to Ashwa Hall for having us. Uh, being able to host this um, at this venue is amazing, and, and we hope to do it again. And I think that the face painting and the interactive art, uh, it all just went over so well, and everybody seemed to have a really good time tonight, and I'm um, really happy with the outcome. Yeah, I'm really loving the interactive art over there. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. I I wasn't sure what it was going. You know, you never know what the outcome will be, and I, you know, I want to hang that on my wall. <laughs> so, it's uh, we'll have some lucky raffle winners tonight. <laughs> yeah, I think over over the course of the night, probably like, I would say like 10 or 15 people uh, put their energy uh, into these canvases over here and. It came out to be, I don't, it's amazing. I would sell one of these. Yeah, this is really fun. <laughs> it's really, really fun. And uh, so we're just looking forward to next summer. I, I'm so excited. It's coming up soon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now we're in the preparations for everything for the next three issues. And hopefully we'll keep uh, giving you good, good content. <laughs> exactly, we will. Hampton Days. <laughs> you can look for us on Stands of Summer in the independent newspaper and also on our website, HamptonDays.com. And we can't wait to see you this summer. <laughs> see you soon.